And hello from Chicago. It's Bess Nevera for Music Direct and MusicDirect.com. Nice to have you with us on this, the second day of a series of conversations from the listening room. We're glad you could join us. As always, if you have any questions for our guests, you are welcome to ask as you go on. Uh, we certainly want you to enjoy the experience interactively with us. Uh, but for any reason, just sit back and watch and enjoy the fun. Uh, also, we wanted to give you guys an update on how things are going here in Chicago, where Music Direct's headquarters are located. As many of you may be aware, we are entering into phase three of the soft open of the state of Illinois and its many regions, including here in Chicago. So we are making a conscious effort to get ready to uh, welcome you good folks back into our offices and into our showrooms. For more details on how things are going, we do invite you to visit our website at musicdirect.com. Also, if you can, subscribe to, uh, to our Soundbytes emailer. Uh, that way you'll get a better chance to get up-to-the-minute information on how we are acting as an organization, including rules for social distancing, how we'll take care of current trends in our contactless delivery of goods to our local customers when you visit us in Chicago's uh, Edgewater slash Andersonville slash Bowmanville corridor uh, at our facility out there on Bryn Mawr Avenue. Uh, as always, our customer service team and our sales team are available uh, a phone call away. You can check in with us at 1-800-449-8333 for additional information. Well, as we announced, uh, this is day two of this fun uh, shindig of conversations in the listening room. And to get a sense of why this was created, you one need, ne uh, need go further than to look, look at our uh, articles that are being penned and curated by my colleague, and Vice President of Music Direct, Josh Bazaar. His notes from my listening room, which really does take place in his listening room at his home here in Chicago, has become a really wonderful treat for people to read. We've had a number of contributors who have checked in on a regular basis when a new article pops up, including this week, written by yours truly, on the virtues of listening to Sir George Schulte and classical music and how it uh, became part of my life in listening to great con uh, concertos and orchestras through great audio equipment, uh, starting with my father's Macintosh and Altec gear back in the 1960s. But moving forward, these stories have now transcended into this video series that we're going to be doing throughout the month of June, and perhaps all the way even through July. So if you want to be part of this conversation, you certainly want to make sure you bookmark Music Direct's Facebook page uh, and also watch for when we are doing these types of events. Uh, they have a number of great guests that are scheduled later in the month. We'll tell you about that towards the end of our program. Our first guest, well, there's so many ways that I could talk about, uh, about Todd Eichenbaum, other than say that he is the kind of person who has a bloodline here in Chicago, because Todd uh, did enjoy his uh, time at Northwestern University uh, in nearby Evanston, Illinois, where he picked up his, uh, in 1986, where he got his a Bachelor of Science there. He picked up his Master of Science in Engineering, however, at Stanford uh, and began an internship <laughs> of all places at Koss Headphones up uh, near Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, he would later go on to move into his career uh, to such uh, notable places at Krell Industries, where he spent nearly two decades of his storied career there developing products uh, under that brand. Um, in 2013, however, he began his next chapter uh, at uh, Harman International Industries, home of a number of great brands under its uh, luxury audio brands banner, which includes a number of products that Music Direct started carrying just a few, uh, few years ago, most notably JBL, Arcam, uh, and also Mark Levinson. And here to join us uh, to chit chat about this is our good friend uh, Todd Eichenbaum, who is working from his home in Connecticut. And Todd, how the heck are you? Well, first of all, uh, nice, nice to be with you, Bess. Um, how am I? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing okay. Um, I have to say, I'm, I'm as busy as I've ever been, re uh, regardless of being uh, cooped up at home or back in the office. Um, so that's good. Well, that's good to know. I mean, obviously, those of us who are in the industry, you know, as you have discovered yourself having to take a back seat from our office spaces, wherever we may be, whether it's here in Chicago at Music Direct, or in your case, with Team Levinson and that great, great brain trust in, in Shelton, Connecticut, uh, having to work at, for the most part at home. Has that changed your, you know, sort of 
dynamic, having to sort of share your space with family and do the kind of things that you need to do in your role? Um, it's, it's different for sure. Um, we at our office were, were a very collaborational group and it, it was, it was not unusual to, you have a question, get up and walk over and talk to somebody. Well, that, that, that whole thing is, uh, shall we say, a little different now. Um, but we have we have made it work. We have WebEx at our disposal. And when we know we have something that should get discussed, throw a WebEx on the calendar, pick up the phone. Um, we're, um, we are working around it, I would say, as well as I could have hoped, um, which is it's great. Well, I think that's really important, especially given the fact that, uh, you know, we look at the ability in Music Direct's world to maintain a uh, sort of a web itself when we were all working together. Uh, the transition to these working from home scenarios was very unique, but we pretty much built into the uh, into that uh, uh, to that workspace through collaborations. Uh, we have done a number of our own video meetings to keep pace with our own technology. Uh, your good folks have been able to do WebEx training with our sales team so that we stay ahead of the curve, especially with new product announcements from all of your brand partner uh, associations, most notably the L82 from JBL, as well as the uh, uh, the uh, LDI, LDI series, I think I'm, I'm saying that right, also from JBL. HDI. HDI, thank HDI. you. Yeah. And of course, the, the new announcements of the integrated amplifier from uh, Arkham among the uh, big, uh, big to-dos. But on a more personal level, the stories that I've been getting from a lot of the people, both customers and from my industry friends who in preparing for this is how has people like have, have people like Todd Eichenbaum spent their own personal time? Have they been rethinking about their stereo systems? Have they gone through their record collections while they have a moment and go, oh, this God, I haven't listened to this at, at a moment. Was there a wow moment for you as you began to sort of balance the life of Todd Eichenbaum, hardworking dude for Mark Levinson and Harmon, to Todd Eichenbaum, father, husband, all-around guy? Um, it's it, It's been an interesting change. Um, on the, I guess on the plus side, my wife and I went from being empty nesters to having a full house again. And that's been... Uh, I got to say, unexpectedly wonderful. Uh, again, circumstances aside, all of that. Uh, wow moments. Um, I've certainly been, uh, I've certainly been listening differently to what I listen to and finding out about things differently. Uh, a lot more uh, listening suggestions are sort of accidentally coming through social media. Um, for example, I, um, I friended Benny Green, the, the jazz pianist on Facebook, and you know, there've been these, these challenges to, to put up 10 albums that were influential. Well, when he did that, I thought this is something I have to take notice of. This is a, a, a gifted, respected jazz pianist. What it, what is he like? And so I, I rediscovered a couple of the records that, that he put up there. Um, the other thing I've been doing is, um, while I'm working, admittedly, situation, but I will listen to stuff on the computer. Being a jazz guy, I'll go to Kobuz or Tidal, and I'll type in the name of a song, some jazz standard, and just look at the whole list that pops up and just play every version of it by somebody. Um, so that's what I've been doing. I think that's great. I, uh, I share your enthusiasm for that as well during this time um, from realizing that my turntable had been gathering dust to uh, reassessing my digital playback uh, platform. It's It's been the kind of sound quality but more importantly, the music quality of what's out there when you're letting yeah. services like Kobuz, services like Tidal, help you out to 
master your course of what it is that you choose to listen to. And I can only speak for myself when I say that there's a wonderful catharsis that in these times when you are either by yourself or need time and space because the needs of the family have to sort of interspersed with working from home, which has been a very unique experience for myself and my wife, in that when you have music as a component to guide you, to place you into a, a sense of positivity and productivity in enhancing your own, your own well-being, I think that that, is, that speaks volumes. And I love the fact that you are a full-on jazz lover uh, and with just full-on... Uh, love for people like Benny Green. I bet it's been fun to watch some of those concerts that he's been doing and other great artists around the world to just sort of like keep the keep the groove going. Has that been your feeling as well? Yeah. Um, I haven't uh, I haven't partaken of as many of them as I should, but um, to be able to to just on a almost practically on a whim catch stuff on on Facebook or whatever. Uh, it's, that's been really great. Um, that's, that's been a, a nice outcome from, from all of this. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, let's dig deep into, Mar uh, into Todd Eichenbaum, the dude from, uh, Mark Levinson. Clearly there's gotta be a story behind your decision to join Mark Levinson. But as we said at the onset, your time here in Illinois, uh, graduating in 1986, which would have been right around the time I was still working at Pacific Stereo around the corner yeah. at 16 Church Street across from Marshall Fields, for those of us who know Illinois and knowing, and knowing the Chicago area. You and I have a certain faded moment where we would walk into an iconic audio store and just go, wow, what was that moment for you? And why does it play into the concept of Mark Levinson? Um, so I was, uh, as, as you might expect, uh, a hobbyist for a long time and, uh, the local high-end salon in Evanston was audio consultants for decades. And I, I would go in there from time to time because I was interested and, and people, people in the shop were nice enough to talk to an obnoxious college student like me. Um, there was there was a time, I think I was probably between midterms where I had a, a free night at school. It's like a Tuesday night and one of the one of the salesmen said, hey, come in, we'll do some listening. So I I brought my own personal amplifier into the store with me and he uh, was kind enough to do a listening test up against amplifiers from Tanberg. There is a name from the past. <laughs> uh, Threshold and Mark Levinson. And um, it was the first time that I did really, really critical listening. And what I came away with was, uh, frankly, falling in love with the sound of Mark Levinson. Uh, everything, and it's not that it, the other stuff sounded bad, but I heard the Levinson stuff and it was, it was something else. So I, of course, left there very disappointed that I would get to go home and listen to my old equipment again. Um, but it, it totally, uh, I, it, it was a life-changing moment because uh, I knew the experience that I hope to recreate later in my life when someday I went into the hi-fi business. Um, and it, it helped me know what was possible. Did you ever think that after that experience and you know, with all that you uh, enjoyed about uh, doing audio today, did you ever think that you would walk through the doors of places like, in your case, Krell for two decades, and now since 2013, Mark Levinson, to produce the kind of products that people are going ape on? I mean, I, you know, the products that we've been carrying since our relationship began with Mark Levinson in particular has been very exciting. 
uh, these are products that are just have the heft and the feel, uh, but also a lot of the DNA of what you experienced. But has that has that been has that been kind of exciting for you since uh, since you know being in this industry as long as you have? Um, it's only been exciting for about the last thirty two years. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it, it, but, but seriously, I, I mean, uh, if you, you, you talk to somebody in school and you say, you say to them, what would you really want to do when you get out of here? Oh, well, I write this list down and it's every, every professional opportunity I've had. So, uh, I, I things could have worked out worse for me. Yeah. No, I I I, t I totally get it. I think that's uh, I think that's absolutely hilarious that we look at it from that perspective. So you're now at Mark Levinson. You've been given one heck of a task to put the brand out there for people to really enjoy, and this follows in what I learned during my uh, initial training to be certified as a as a Harman dealer. Uh, or in, in this case, a salesperson within the framework of Music Direct to offer Harman products. But we really got a really deep dive uh, from our visits to California uh, at, uh, at Harman's headquarters out there, but also to my visit to visit uh, Shelton and see your brain trust over there. Um, so talk to me about the companies, if, for people who don't know right away, tell me about Levinson's inception as a whole its philosophy under your watch and what's really kind of ahead of the curve for the brand right now. So um, Mark Levinson, the, the company was founded in 1972, uh, coincidentally by a person who was named Mark Levinson. And uh, Mark Levinson, the guy, was a musician and an audiophile. And the, the executive summary is he wanted to build equipment. Remember, this is 1972. He wanted to build equipment, solid state gear, that offered all the performance of the best vacuum tube gear of the day, but with the reliability of and, and the repeatability of, of solid state gear. Um, and the, the company um, the, succeeded in that, in that goal and, and developed quite an enviable reputation. Um, there was quite a, a line of, of famous uh, designers who came through. Um, Dick Berwin was, uh, I believe, the first engineer there who um, has gone on to do many great things since then. He designed uh, the LNP, I believe it's the LNP-1 preamp. John Curl, who uh, has, uh, within our industry, anybody who knows engineers knows of John Curl. Um, and then later, uh, Tom Colangelo. And, um, and then when Mark Levinson, the guy, uh, moved along to other things after uh, selling the company to uh, Madrigal. Uh, there, there were other teams of engineers who came in, um, and the, the the sale to Harmon occurred in the I, I believe it was the the late eighties, early nineties. Um, so, I. I realize I'm sort of glossing over several decades here, but um, throughout this whole time, uh, the Mark Levinson brand has had a a, a very positive uh, and respected reputation. Um, when I was offered the uh, the opportunity to come in in 2013. Uh, Harmon was looking to reinvigorate the brand, to develop a lot of gear, um, and uh, it, to, to quote uh, one of my favorite movies, they, they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Uh, you know, you, uh, I, I was offered the chance to 
to, to build an engineering team to spearhead the development of uh, new 500 series products. It was, it was, and, and it was a, a job with the company that, that, you know, this was my first love. Um, so not that I, not that I didn't love Krell, not that I, I didn't love uh, Precision Power where I did aftermarket car stuff for several years. Um, but, you know, it was Mark Levinson. So <laughs> that's always a great story. So you're now at Mark Levinson. You are given the task of putting these products to market in a way that has kind of had the brand, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it had been basically dormant for a period of time. And there was a primary objective to produce products that basically put the roadmap to Mark Levinson's eminence in our public consciousness. We know it currently uh, in some ways through its interactivity in car audio, through many of the vehicles that bear the Lexus name. But I also know that as a high-end audio manufacturer, it had to be out there in the, uh, in the jungle of other high-end brands. And yet here we are looking at products like the 523, the 526, the 534 amplifiers and 536 amplifiers, each with their own sort of really cool factors that are going on here. Uh, that, if you could, let's talk about a little bit about the genesis of those pieces and what and why, as a result of that, you think uh, they're considered by people in our industry as you know the ultimate reference component. An excellent example of this was yesterday's conversation was with Gary Yakubian, in which he says he's running a pair of speakers with his number 534. Uh, so that's a, you know, that's a pretty exciting feel when the brothers Absolutely. Of, our, of our industry, you know, enjoy the, 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 you know, interconnectivity with equipment. So I'm, I'm just curious about what that's all about for you. So um, when I, when I joined in 2013, uh, the, the two products that had been launched most recently were the number 52 and number 53, the, the reference preamp and power amps. And those were really costly products. Um, number 53s are, are 50 grand a pair. Um, and that's some, that's some pretty rarefied air up there. And what we wanted to do was to come in with uh, create flesh out the, the 500 series with products that were around half that cost. So even at, even at half the cost, it's, this is certainly not, uh, not stuff to be purchased uh, lightly or casually, but um, it does open it up to a, a whole other range of, uh, of people. Uh, but as I said, it, it's still expensive. We, we knew that, Components like this are still aspirational, and we we set out to do the not only the the best that we could in given those price constraints, but um, the the first the first product on the docket for for the team and myself was the 585 integrated, and I came into this wanting to recreate my experience that night in 1984, whenever it was in audio consultants. Um, I wanted to recreate a product that delivered that kind of imaging and staging and uh, clarity and effortlessness of sound. Um, we knew that it, it had to look like a Mark Levinson product. It had to have the right heft and feel and industrial design um, and level of quality. So, uh, but we also knew there were, as you mentioned, all of these other products that would follow on in, in the coming couple of years. So we designed the 585 as a platform. Um, there was a line stage, there was a DA converter, there was a, a, a digital input stage. And we designed all of these with the intention of being able to use them in other products down the road, which which we did. Um, the 
the 523, 526 preamps use uh, a version of the, the 585 line stage that we made fully balanced rather than uh, having it be a, a single ended signal path. Uh, the power amps are a different story. Um, we used an existing amp channel in the in the 585. So the 534, 536 development, um, those were developed again with a with the platform in mind, but that was a new platform. Uh, we we took our our new uh, voltage gain stage from the line stage essentially from the 585 and just made it really big so it could be the gain stage of a power amp um, and i i'm of course oversimplifying as as my engineering team will tell you because uh it it's not as easy as just oh we'll just make that bigger what could possibly go wrong <laughs> um, but um that that was that was really the the genesis of all this um and look it's it's uh it's great to be part of a a group of talented intelligent people um and to be able to uh have a common goal which the the, the big common goal was 500 series and then each little goal along the way was was developing these individual products. Well, we all know as a result of that how incredibly powerful these pups are and, and how fantastic their sound quality. I, every chance we've had before the pandemic when I had to set up our rooms for in-store clients and or product training, whether it's through your brand teams or others, uh, one of the first things I do is immediately make sure that the 585.5 is ready to rock and roll for what you know for what we need to do, as well as the 519, uh, you know the the glorious hefty uh, network audio player. And of course, there's also even analog fanatics who who want to get a taste of the 515, which was one of the uh, more newer products to come out of the stable in a collaboration between yourselves and VPI. Uh, fast forward to my last visit uh, in Shelton. Uh, beautiful weather, uh, great to be uh, uh, taken for a ride, as it were, by Chris Robinson, uh, you know, Harmon's uh, uh, director of training, uh, and a, an all-around really, really sweet guy. And I had a chance to meet all of you good folks over there uh, for conversation and for a deeper dive into the, into the Levinson story. Um, we now are looking at two new products that are coming out of the stable one of which was announced last year and was prominently featured in our Music Direct catalog and in our website, uh, the five, uh, the number 5000 integrated amplifier. Um, on first look and first listen back in that day when the unit was in its beta mode uh, and comparing it against all the other amplifiers that were in the listening space and testing facility there, my gut reaction is, holy cow, you hit this one out of the park. How much is it? And then when you told me the price point or its expected price point, I just went, wow. Uh, so, you know, there's clearly some DNA from the bigger brothers, but you also had to ask the magic question, how do I make this Levinson product so killer that we do it only for so much? What, 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 what was the thinking there? So um, the the mantra that that I've uh, that I've had and that our, our group has had um, is a favorite a favorite quote of mine from Albert Einstein. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. Um, and this is the this is the result of um, lots of experience where I found largely by accident that simpler signal paths and simpler circuits uh, to a point, again, the, the not simpler point, um, but to a point um, offered improvement. So along comes this assignment to, to develop a 5,000 series of electronics that once again, we wanna be about half the cost of the 500 series. Um, 
And what we did was to say, look, first, first of all, um, we believe that these should work within their limits, of course, as well as 500 series products. So uh, within their limits, you know, the, the 5805 integrated is not going to be a pair of 536s. Right. That it's a, it's a different limit, but we want, our goal should be to make them work as well. But then the real goal here was make these things simpler to make them better. Sure, lower cost comes along for the ride when things are simpler, but don't make them cheap. Make them simpler. Make them less expensive. Um, don't spend money where it doesn't help. Um, so you'll notice, for example, a top cover on a 5805 integrated is painted. It's not anodized. Well, there's a there's a cost savings there, but not not a quality savings. The material is still uh, high quality, heavy gauge aluminum. It's just not anodized. Uh, we develop new circuitry. We, uh, in fact, we have one patent pending and a second patent issued for uh, technology that we that we implemented, and the result of of all of that hard work by our team over the course of about two years um, was what you heard. Um, the other place we haven't skimped is in our testing. Uh, we still have to go through, uh, of course, all the necessary compliance testing uh, to distribute product all over the world. But we do quality testing, safety testing. We do halt testing to, to make sure that you can pretty much uh, punish the hell out of these things and uh, they won't fail until you do something ridiculous. And by punish, so, and by punish, I, as I remember it, it even comes down to box crush tests to see how a, yes. a, a product like yours sustains transport from point A to point B. And that's just, that's a rarity for some of the manufacturers that I've come across over the years. Yeah, this is this is dictated by Harman to us, but the fact is, it it causes us to make our products better, to design them better. Um, it, jokingly, one of the tests is is called shake and bake because you put it on a vibration table and you alternately heat it and cool it uh, until you break the thing. That's a lot so. of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's intentional, just to, just to prove a point, I think that's a that that's pretty pretty intense. That also goes to the next question, if I can, and that is Levinson is an American design product, but it's also American made. Am I correct on that? In terms of all the, all of its componentry, where where is it all done? Who, who are the people behind the scenes in that situation? So our products are all assembled. Uh, by contract manufacturers in Massachusetts. Uh, are all of the individual components American made? Uh, they are not. It would be disingenuous to say that they are. We get them from wherever the, the best place is to get them from. Um, and in this, in this land of uh, global supply chain, uh, here in the year 2020, this is how things work. But all of the final assembly happens in the U.S. Uh, the facilities are, are no more than three hours from where we are in Connecticut, which means that our team can get in the car and drive up there. Um, we have weekly calls with our with our manufacturers to go over issues. Um, so we're very much involved in the in the manufacturing process let's let's talk for a second about the next generation of player um, as we all know uh, or at least have been alerted at that time and, and certainly through uh, Harman's marketing team that worked closely with us we were getting ready for Axphona which was supposed to happen this past April but as the world knows 
uh, things went a different direction. And as a result, uh, events like Munich, events like Axpona, and all future shows basically uh, through the end of 2020 are, for the moment, scuttled. And we really can't do anything about it. We do have to respect the wishes of each of the individual organizations, the locales in which they're in, and the situations that are independent of each state and each market. But at the time that you were literally on the ready to go, the announcement of the 5101 was uh, in play. Um, there has to be some DNA taken from the experiences of the 519. But my sense was, oh my God, it's an SACD player. For those of us who are really hip to wanting physical media in their house to be able to still play great Red Book CD through a really good, uh, good digital chain, but also enjoy high quality native resolution SACD. And then on top of it, being able to do network audio streaming kind of you know popularity that's just running running higher than a kite um number one uh how is that project coming along and two what have you learned about it in the creation of it um so that project was the the first of what i believe will be many uh shall we say uh cross location collaborations um in 2017, as, as you mentioned, Harmon acquired Arcam, and the uh, the digital engine from the 5101 uh, is is very closely related to the Arcam CDS 50. Um, so the CDS 50 has all of these same features. It has a drive that will handle SACD and regular CD playback. So between that, the streaming capability, we had a, a great digital platform to start with. So now we set about uh, improving, not some, I, I shouldn't say improving, but rather putting Mark Levinson uh, D to A converter, output stage, power supply, enclosure, all of that stuff, uh, around this digital engine. So a lot of the Mark Levinson DNA is directly descended from the 5805 integrated amp project. Um, and what you see, if, if you were to remove the top from the 5101, you would see a digital audio board. That's a, almost a dead ringer for what's in the 5805 using the, the new Pro Series DA converter chip from ESS, uh, our fully discrete direct coupled uh, analog stages, a linear supply to run all the analog bits. Um, and that made it to uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the digital engine from a CDS50. And I think that's, you know, one of the glories about the synergy that has happened over the years with Harman uh, doing the acquisition of Arcam, which for me was exciting because, of course, the, when the CDS50 came out to market, uh, I thought, oh boy, a reasonably priced SACD and slash CD player that does a pretty decent job. And it does. But, and, and, and I'm sure you can sort of offer your, your feelings about this. One of the things that we learned in training on the Arcam in particular of the S of their transports is they're not baking it off of other people's transports. This is their own self-manufactured, self-engineered, self-created chassis that goes against the grain of conventional transports that are out there where they rely on third-party manufacturers, uh, you know, uh, brands we won't mention, but they're, they're out there trying to just say, oh, here, just slap it on there, it'll be fine with it. Not mm -hmm. so in the case of the CDS-50. You must have really had to sit there and spend a pretty good time just you know, tinkering with it, looking at it, and then saying, yeah, it's going to work with this. And in the voicing of the product, did it, did it you know, really engender a, uh, a kind of successful conclusion where you just sort of sat it with each other and the team and you went, I think we've, got, I think we've, uh, we've struck the mother load on this one? Um, the answer to your, to your second question is yes. Um, we... 
we had, of course, we had this this building block to to start with, uh, being the D to A converter and the output stage. But yes, we did do some some uh, some listening tests and measurements as we always do, um, and fine tuned it for a better result. Um, in terms of making the uh, uh, the 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 bits of the CDS 50 platform that we either reused in one form or another. Um, if you look at how the, the units assembled, uh, first of all, we're using a slot loading transport in the 5101 rather than a tray loader. But even that, um, we have it, it's, it's shock mounted internally. Uh, we have a big, heavy, uh, aluminum shielding plate over the top of it, which uh, not only provides some electrical shielding, but but also some mechanical damping and some noise reduction. So we've we've paid attention to some some of the more esoteric details in in the product, um, and it's uh, it's really yielded a, a, a I think something that that ought to be very successful for us. Well, that that's terrific. Um, we actually have a viewer with a question, and if you don't mind, I'm going to parlay it on you. If you don't know it, you don't know it. But you know, it, it okay. has something to do with uh, with what people are thinking out there. And Patrick is asking whether or not there is a high end Blu-ray audio only SACD CD player. Now, I know Levinson in general has always focused on two channel. They love it when their products are integrated into processors and so on and so forth as the as the link to a high-end home theater system, whether it's Atmos or the other words. But a lot of players from other manufacturers have chosen to exit part of the parts of the physical media kind of landscape. Do you see that as something in the bubble for, uh, for Levinson as a whole? Um, as in adding a, a product like that? Yeah. Or something, is it something that might be in the, you know, in that sort of, uh, a modeling chain or, or creation chain for you guys? Um, I would never say never, but I, I don't think so. Yeah. It, it's a hard subject, isn't it? I mean, you know, we, there's, it is. there's, there's so many, there's so many mediums that are out there for people to enjoy. And, and, and with all due respect to those of us, myself included, who still collect physical media, uh, the landscape of services through, t through title Cobas and so forth for audio has been terrific. Uh, but also at the same time, um, the ability to stream, which has really been running like a wildfire uh, for, for many people, has been terrific, which goes back to the heart of, of, of the 5101. Uh, I think that in its platform, the ability to be uh, Cobas and Title MQA compliant is, uh, is important. I, I can't remember if in the preliminaries, if it was also going to be a Rune endpoint for, uh, for fans of that service. Um, it's it's not, and um, I should also point out it it's not uh, the fifty one hundred one is not MQA compliant. Okay, thank you. Uh, the the five nineteen uh, is will do both MQA and function as a rune endpoint. Okay, okay, but as a but as a streamer component, it's still got all the all the you know the bells and whistles to make people really go crazy on that. Absolutely. Um, does uh, good up to uh, 24, 192 PCM. Uh, will play back uh, uh, DSD format files up to up to double speed and, and so forth. So it 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 ticks it ticks an awful lot of boxes. <laughs> and one hefty power supply. <laughs> yes. Always. Always. You gotta have a power supply. Yeah. Um this is gonna seem like an esoteric question, but this does come to me from uh, my colleague and our vice president, Josh Bazaar, uh, who, as we mentioned at the onset, is the curator of the written series of notes from my listening room. And he asks an interesting question. Hopefully this is something that Team Levinson may have been thinking about. I just wanted to get your feeling on it and whether that has a bearing in the future of, of products for all of us. Um, what has Mark Levinson been doing to address uh, any demands, if any, or the demand for greener technologies uh, for those of us who want it? Is there something in the pipeline that is there? Has it been discussed? Is it a sort of a, 
sort of a scientific conversation between yourself and, and the uh, other engineers within within uh, uh, Shelton? Um, well, there there are several things happening, and um, on the one hand, many of these are. Uh, I'll be honest, many of these things are, are legislated to us, um, but that doesn't make them any, any less worthwhile. Um, in particular for Europe, we have uh, Europe and, and parts of Asia, there is a maximum standby current regulation that we must adhere to. So when these things are in standby, they have to consume less than half a watt. And everything that we make um, meets that standard. Um, and we, when we ship products, um, although, we, although we allow users to change the standby mode if they want, everything by default ships with the lowest possible standby consumption. There's also a, a whole battery of environmental tests that, that these units have to go through. For each new product, um, we take an entirely, a brand new unit, whatever it is, a prototype, we put it in a box, we send it off to a lab in Bentonville, Arkansas, where they toss it into a machine and they grind it up and analyze it for hazardous materials. Out. Um, well, the, but this That's is a lot of gear, you know, this man. Is a, <laughs> this is a this is a cost of doing business. Well, I, I um, understand that, but my God, I I can only you know watch a YouTube video where they're taking something like a silly little toy truck and just watching it get completely crushed. But you're telling me that a product like the five eighty five dot five or any of the products that that come out of that uh, out of the Harman stable gets pulverized and it gets dumped yes. back for that kind of thing. Yes, and and I'm assuming there's a high success rate for you know for situations like that. Well, we we aren't allowed to go to market with something that doesn't meet all the necessary standards. So, their the success rate, although the the success rate out of the gate might not be a hundred percent, the success rate once we go to market is a hundred percent. I think that's I think that's pretty killer. Um, we have a few more minutes left before we uh, say thanks to everyone who have been uh, uh, watching here. Of course, you know, we're dealing in a crystal ball universe now under the COVID situation. Uh, and certainly uh, the world is watching. And I always have to ask our guests the, the inevitable question uh, without uh, giving away any state secrets, of course, if where you can, uh, is... You've given us the new product. We're grateful for it. We're loving to see what's happening. I'm I'm eager to see what's going on with the 5101 when it when it hits the street. I want to play with it. I just want to be able to tell our customers, my colleagues in our sales department, what a uh, what a glorious machine is. But is there anything else you know that uh, that that's going on uh, at this point? Whether it's from uh, from Levinson or any of the other brand partners you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> well. I, I can't share specifics, um, but uh, I did mention that the 5805 development was uh, was another platform development. So um, I'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> use your imagination. Uh, and I told you uh, I told you that that um, my team and I are are busy. So. We're busy working on new stuff. The busy bee. So, uh, uh, yeah. So Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I will I will simply say um, we are looking forward to getting a 5101 into your hands um, because uh, I, I re remember, of course, from your visit to Connecticut, but what you didn't mention was uh, – I think it was a little over two years ago. I visited Music Direct and spent a couple of days with with you and and Josh and Jim and of course all the all the people there. Yeah, and um, you guys are a very um, interested, involved, uh, knowledgeable group. So uh, 
you're you're the kind of partners that we we want to we want to get stuff into your hands and get get some get some feedback and and get some sales of course well that that's uh, that's kind words uh, as you know we really do make a very concerted effort to know our products from top to bottom we're human if we don't and that's why we always look forward to uh, reaching out to your uh, tech service and customer service teams to get the right answer for the right situation. They're responsive, they're very unique to us, and we're deeply appreciative of it. Um, but also your praise continues to resonate even uh, years after your visit. The only thing that's missing from this conversation is the ability for you to come back to Chicago, at which point we'll both get in the car and head over to GGO's, attempt to have a good slice of pizza uh, <laughs> and visit some of your old haunts. Uh, although Lou Malnati's, the question of deep dish pizza might still be on your uh, on your radar, should that uh, argument come to uh, pass in the, uh, in the in the days, weeks, and months ahead, but uh, you know you're always uh, you're always welcome uh, at the House of Music Direct when we open up to the public and and welcome everybody to uh, uh, to Chicago. Uh, Hopefully sooner than later. Yeah, there you go, Todd yeah. Eichenbaum. I know you've got plenty of things to do. I want uh, to thank you on behalf of all of us at Music Direct and everyone watching on Facebook Live. If you missed any of this, it will go to YouTube. So you'll be able to see some of that in, uh, virtually unedited uh, to get a sense of the conversation between myself and uh, 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 Mr. Eichenbaum. And if you have other plans on your plate, well, you'd better start thinking about your calendar over the next couple of weeks because uh, in tomorrow's broadcast, we are going to be sitting down with Joe Harley, uh, who is, of course, best known for his work uh, in the current realm on the Blue Note uh, projects of Tone Poet recordings and reissues. Uh, he is uh, constantly active and, and always keeping within the breath of, uh, of what's going on uh, in the world today. Uh, next week, David Solomon joins us. We'll also have a meeting with Bill Lowe from the Quest Group. And of course, Ivana Manley is going to join us on the 11th. If you'd like to know more and follow us on Facebook on the scheduling, look to the events page to get a sense of what's happening there. Uh, and you'll certainly want to uh, find yourself going to those shows as much as possible. Don't forget, you can visit us online at musicdirect.com for information on all of the Mark Levinson products that we've discovered. Uh, there are some specials on there, including some open box products for you to jump on. And finally, if you really need to, we'd love to see you on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with your products, your stories, and your appreciation for all things audio. So for all of us here at Music Direct in Chicago and all the brands we support, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Until then, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Bess. <laughs>